No matter how hard our day was, my mom always had a hot meal waiting for us when we got home. So my mother still sends me care packages. I've been out of college for probably about three years now and she still will make me homemade cookies and then send them to me. My mom is a poet and um, she's always written me poems for good luck and they have always been a, a complete and total inspiration to me. And sometimes she'll cut out crossword puzzles from her local newspaper and send them to me in the mail. I remember my mom used to see me to sleep every night. <laughs> My mother always encouraged me to follow my dreams. My mother always told me I can achieve anything if I put my mind to it. My mom would always say, you've got to stand for something or you'll fall for anything. Thank you, Mom, for uh, making all of my Halloween costumes by hand every year. Um, let's see. Uh... My mom was on the uh, school hockey team. She was the, the goalkeeper, for crying out loud. Oh, this was the uh, the girls' hockey team. My mom used... Okay, let me think of how you say this. My mom and I always watch Gilmore Girls together, even though we live 300 miles apart. Uh, okay, I should have thought about this more. I'm sorry. My mom always knew exactly what to say to make me feel better. My mother is an undying optimist. She always sees the silver lining around the clouds. My mom's the bomb. My mom would give me 20 bucks to roll my hair. My mom loves Tom Selleck. My mom took us all over the world and showed us all the sights, and I will always be grateful for that. My mom doesn't let me talk with my mouth full. When I was 18, I still didn't have my driver's license, so my mother had to drive my date night at prom. When she picked us up afterwards, I had to have my goodnight kiss with my mother sitting in the front seat of my car. We lived in Bedfordshire during World War II. And when the cottage burned down, leaving us with nothing but the clothes on our back, my mother cuddled us, gave us a kiss, and said, don't worry, because I'm here for you. And she was. I love you, Mom. 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 We love you, Mom. Oma, Saranghe. I love you, Mom. 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 Thank you, Mom. I love you so much. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Welcome to New Life Online. My name is Dave Finley. I'm the pastor at New Life Assembly here in Killarney, Manitoba. And we're so glad that you've joined us in worship today. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. We trust that God will bless you. We want to honor you and encourage you today. We're going to show some special videos about moms and uh, kids giving thanks for their moms and some video messages that speak about motherhood and uh dedicating your children to God and praying for your kids. And we trust that you'll be blessed by those. We are using some different technology today. And so I trust you'll bear with us. Our video looks a little different than normal. In fact, I'm recording today from my kitchen and uh, dining room area. And so I trust that you will be blessed by the service today. If you'd like more information about New Life Assembly, you can always text the word CONNECT to the number 431-400-9585, and we'll send you out some information. There'll be that number at the end of this uh, recording, and you can uh, check out uh, what's going on in the church and what's happening. Would you bow with me in prayer? Father God, I thank you for this day. Thank you for this day to worship you and to honor you. Thank you for everyone who watches. We thank you, especially for moms today. We pray your blessing upon all the mothers that are out there. 
We pray, God, as we honor our mothers, both those who are living and those who have already passed on. God, we pray that you will bless your people. And uh, we want to honor those mothers who played such an important role in our lives. And we ask your blessing on this service. As they speak to our hearts, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to have a few songs of praise and worship. Why don't you join with us?
she's my teacher. My mom has always supported me in all of my goals and endeavors and has always loved me and been with me through some of the most difficult parts of my life. And she always encourages me to really trust God and go to him in everything. And she prays with me when I need it the most. I love you, mom. I like that mom is always there for me and she takes care of all of us. Um, my mom is always very encouraging and supportive of any pursuits. She's always there to comfort you when you need it. She's just the best. I love my mom. My mom has taught me how to be compassionate and empathetic. I love you, Mom. I like that my mama um, puts me down and helps me down and sings and sings for me when I go to sleep. My mom was always there for me whenever I needed, whether it be uh, making my favorite meal on my birthday or supporting me in my time of need. I love you, Mom. Many of you probably don't recognize the name of Patty Mallett, but she is Justin Bieber's mom. How many of you recognize his name? She's from Ontario, from the town of Stratford, and uh, she is sharing her testimony and uh, what happens when you dedicate your child to God and, and uh, uh, pray that God will bless his life and use him to touch others. Enjoy this short testimony. How many of you guys have heard of Justin Bieber? <laughs> Wave at me if you've heard of him. Okay, good. You had me worried there for a minute. This is his mom. Go ahead and share for me. want me to share? I don't know. Whatever you want. These guys are my grandparents. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Um, my spiritual mom and dads, my parents um, mm. from Stratford, were kind of discipled and raised up by um, John and Carol. And whew. it's thick up here. Yeah. Huh? And I remember giving my life to Jesus in a hospital room after I had recently tried to commit suicide. And whew, six months later, I, um, I was pregnant. And I... I rededicated, I gave my life back, and I said, oh my gosh, I took my life back into my own hands, and look what I did. I was so shamed, how could I go back into the church pregnant and unwed and so full of shame? And you taught them to love me and pick me up and love me where I was at. When you fall down, you get up and you keep on going. Come on, Patty. Yes. Come on. So, so I remember coming here, I lived in a, a pregnancy home, had a choice, um, there was a lot going on and uh, I needed to live in a pregnancy home and so while I was living there, John Brown came and picked me up and he said, you need to come, it was 1994, it was January or February, just right after this whole craze had um, bust out of the Father's love in all kinds of funky ways and awesomeness. Yeah. And um, I remember uh, a whole bunch of leaders praying over me and just filled with the Spirit and, and prophesying that I was going to birth revival, <laughs> that I was going to birth revival. I was birthing revival. I was birthing yeah. revival. And they prayed deliverance uh, of fear and uh, prayed all kinds of awesome protection and stuff over us. And then um, when I had him, I, at, at the church you guys planted in Stratford, we dedicated his life to Jesus. And a um, whole bunch of stuff has happened throughout the years. And I just 
stayed serving the Lord, um, maybe not perfectly, but faithfully, and, um, and let the Lord kind of bring moms and dads and, and help. Uh, it takes a village to raise a child, don't you know? He is like having 10. And so I remember he came here, he's 12, and it was right, right before Justin Bieber became Justin Bieber. And he um, was here fresh wind. It was the first year he was here without me. I used to come every year yeah. with all the youth. And I remember he came, he was 12 years old, and they, the 20-somethings picked him up. There was like 5,000 people here. I remember it was a lot. Right. And they picked him up as, as a sign to upholding the next generation, and they marched him around the room, and they had no idea who, what, what God was going to do and, and all that. So this has kind of been like a full circle um, for us. And I remember the, the Lord hitting me, and just I would land on the floor, and I was travailing. The first time I, it hit me, the Spirit of God hit me, and I, I ran to the back of the room trying to get away from people, and I, I went into the, the cushion. I was like, oh! Oh, I never, nothing like that had ever happened to me. The Spirit of God come over me. And I was releasing something, and I was, like, embarrassed. And I came back, and Sue, I was like, well, I don't know what just happened to me. I had to yell and then come back, and I did it again. And Sue said to me, she said, the Bible says, and she showed me a scripture. It says, the, the Spirit prays through us with groanings and utterings that words cannot express. And I was like, wow. Thank you. That was awesome. So... We just been coming here, and I remember God hitting. I hit the floor one time, just travailing and praying that um, we would take back the arts. 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 Come on. He's using us, and He put us here, right at the top of the mountain. He showed showed us that He was just gonna. He said, "You guys have done it your way long enough. Move over. It's my turn. I'm gonna show you guys how it's done." And so he put all these people at the top, and he's like, okay, now shine for me, and I'm going to move in, and I just believe this is, it's time, and he's bringing revival. Yeah. Um, correct me if I don't get this quite right, but just, just a couple of weeks ago, Justin tweeted out something to, I don't know, whatever his followers are, something like, 90 million people or something like that <laughs> about Jesus is the way and Jesus is the light and Jesus is the truth. And, well, we're just so proud of them for doing that because so you, many say, say the name of God and they say, you know, thank God, thank God. But he says, Jesus loves you and Jesus, yeah. Jesus and his Jewish um, manager, um, God bless him. He's amazing. He would say, you know, not everyone can relate. Maybe just God bless you. God loves you. And he would say, no, you guys would die for your faith. I would die for mine. It has to be Jesus. Come on. <laughs> Give the Lord a big shout. Come on, Daddy. Come on down here. We just Mark Miro was a professional wrestler and boxer. He's now a uh, public speaker and uh, speaks to high school students and, and schools everywhere. And he shares an inspirational story about his mom. Let this message touch your heart. My mom would be at all my sporting events. Let's say I was playing football, okay? My mother would be on the sidelines. And if the play on the field started going one way, my mother would run along like, Mark, get him, get him. I'd be like, oh my gosh. I'd get in the huddle with the other guys, they go, Mark, is that your mother? I go, no, I never saw her before in my life. <laughs> See, the greatest gift my mother ever gave me, she believed in me. I have overdosed on drugs on three occasions where I should have been dead. But I believe I was kept here for a reason. You show me your friends, I will show you your future. How do I know this? I hung out with losers and I became the biggest loser of them all because I gave up everything I dreamt about as a little boy because of who I chose to surround myself with. My friends would drive me home at two, three, four in the morning. We'd be drunk and high, laughing in the car. We'd pull up in front of my house in New York. they go, Mark, Mark, the light's on. i go, oh man, my mother's up. See, my mom wouldn't go to bed until she knew her son was still alive. I'd walk in, she'd say, Hi, Mark. How was your night? I go, it was good, Mom. I'm just going to go to bed. She goes, 
can I, can I talk to you for a minute? I go, mom, I'm tired, I'm just gonna go to bed. She goes, Mark, I haven't seen you all day and all night. Can I please talk to you? I said, man, just leave me alone. You bug me. I slammed my bedroom door on the one person who believed in me. I was on a worldwide tour and we were wrestling overseas in Japan. After my wrestling match, I went upstairs in my hotel room and I fell asleep. There was a knock at my door at three o'clock in the morning. I got out of bed and I looked through the safety window and I could see it was a Japanese promoter. So I opened the door and he said, Mark, you need to call home. There's been an emergency. I went and got on the hotel room phone. I called back to the United States and said, hey, what's going on? They said, Mark, I don't know how to tell you this. I said, just tell me what happened. All of a sudden they started crying. They go, Mark, I can't tell you. I said, just say it. They said, Mark, your mother died. I just threw the phone down. I ran out of my hotel room. I took the elevator to the lobby and when the doors opened up, I just ran out into the street. I mean, there was no cars, there was no people. It's three o'clock in the morning. And I walked down the middle of a street in Hiroshima, Japan. And I remember looking up and just saying, Mom, I am so sorry. I flew home for her funeral and I was so nervous to walk up to her casket. So I just stood way in the back. And I kept looking from a distance. I kept thinking to myself, Mom, please wake up. Please get up. And then I finally got the nerve to walk up to her. And as I got closer, I could see my mom for the first time. I mean, she was so beautiful. She, she was dressed in white. I mean, she looked like an angel. And I just stood over and I said, Mom, you are my hero. Everything I am, everything I hope to be was because of you. You loved me so much. You gave me a life. You're the only one that ever believed in me. How did I repay her? By getting drunk, by getting high, by getting stupid, by hanging out with losers? For what? All she ever wanted to do was talk to me. I wish I could talk to you now, Mom. I wish you could see what I'm doing. Why couldn't I have been a better son? We are defined by our choices. But if you surround yourself with people involved in drugs and alcohol and pills, it's a dead end. I'm not here to preach to you. I'm here to tell you I lived that life. It leads to broken hearts, broken relationships, broken dreams, and death. For what, to get high? If you have a mother or a father, when you go home, tell them how much you love them. See, my whole life was about being rich and famous. I had to be a millionaire. I had to win the race. I had to win the race to expense my marriage, my family, my friends for what? To be all alone in the world? I learned what is truly important, and that is how precious this gift of life is and our families and how quickly it can be taken away. See, I no longer live in time. I live in moments. See, it's not what's in your pocket that matters. It's what's in your heart that truly matters. Love, love is just a word until somebody comes along and gives it meaning. You, you're the meaning. We pray that these messages will have been encouraging to your heart today and that you will be blessed, especially to the moms out there, that you'll be encouraged and you'll be blessed. It's hard work, I know. And we want to bless you and honor you today. Would you bow with me in prayer? Father God, again, I thank you for the moms that 
raise their children, teach their children, are examples to their children that have so many pressures put on them today. We just pray your blessing upon each mom, each family that's represented. We thank you for them and we just ask, oh God, that your anointing and favor will rest on each one. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. If by chance you've never surrendered your life to Christ and you'd like to do so, you can contact us by saying believe, texting the word believe to the number 431-400-9585. We have some information to give you about Jesus and who Jesus is and how he can be the Lord of your life. Why don't you text us today and let us know? We'll send that out to you right away.